Hello, friends. You have tuned in to Reflections, a program sponsored by Paducah Cooperative Ministry, where together we do God's work with human hands. I'm Reverend Karen Winkle, pastor at United Church of Paducah, and with me uh, today is, uh, and, and every day, or almost every time, mm -hmm. um, is uh, Reverend Gregory Waldrop, who pastors at Fountain Avenue United Methodist, and uh, together we're up to all kinds of things, and um, I just want to check in with you. You ready for today? I'm ready, and uh -huh. glad to be right here. Good glad, deal, good gl deal. And glad you all are with us as well. We've got a very fascinating program. As you know, this year in our programming, once every month we try to connect with the arts community that's growing and really blossoming uh, in our midst. And today we have with us Caroline Oliver, who is a senior at Paducah Tillman yes, High School sir. and a person who's been in the honors art program there for some time. She is, has been an intern with one of our lower town artists, Mark Palmer. And so uh -huh. we're glad you're here with us, Thank Come, Caroline. You. Tell glad us a little to be bit. Here today. Yeah, tell us something about yourself. Well, I've been an AP art student for the past two years at Paducah Tillman. Advanced placement, AP mm -hmm. being college, advanced placement. College level, and um, I've been this year. I serve as president of our National Art Honor Society at our school, and we do a lot of community service activities and such. And. I guess, yeah, the internship that you mentioned in Lower Town. I worked with Mark Palmer, and several students did internships in Lower Town. What's your primary art form, Caroline? Uh, I do, this year I'm doing drawing, and last year I did two dimensional, so in school you focus on a lot of different areas so you can get a full education, but mostly two dimensional work. Haven't really focused on a, a medium yet. <laughs> I am hoping one of these days to get a, 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 a painting by Caroline. Uh, <laughs> I think your daughter has one. I, I know she's, <laughs> she's got one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're glad you're here with us. Thank you. And uh, we're exploring with uh, many of the artists that come here, the sort of the spiritual bases, the, the broader connection between spirit and art between our religious experience mm -hmm. and art, the things that feed us, that makes artistic expression alive, or, or any other thing that you have in mind or heart. Tell us a little bit about process. Um, well, at school it's, it's difficult because you get assigned a lot of artwork, but um, just through different things, different experiences and stuff inspires you to like, to create different things that you see around school, different books you read or um, people that you meet. Um, I don't know, and I create art like a homework assignment. I always try to, I don't know, put my own spin on it because we're all doing the same piece and it's really neat to see like how people do things differently. Like if the assignment was um, set a tone with your, set an emotion with your painting or something, it's interesting to see like what people create, what who makes a happy one, who makes a really strong statement. And, you can learn a lot about people's personalities through art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, through our Art Honor Society, we're able to help through the community a lot with art, and that's interesting to see also how art can be used in different ways to help people. Like, what are the things you've done there? Um, we, we help a lot, like, we've helped at Clark Elementary School with different programs, um, creating pieces, and one of the neatest experiences this year that we've done, there's a kid named Sean, he's in the special education classes, and um, he has a severe learning disability, but he comes in and paints like just about every day in our advanced placement class, and it's really neat to, he makes these amazing paintings, and it's so neat to see and work with Sean, and that's been very enlightening. And So that while he has some limits in mm -hmm. academic areas, he has this Mm -hmm. Unbelievable potential in it's, artistic. It's area. amazing. He he can't like he's so visual. He can't read words, but he can write them and like tell you what they say just because he's such a visual person. But he doesn't know what they mean, and so mm -hmm. it's neat. Our art teacher's been able to help a little bit by um, working with him through a more visual sense. Mm -hmm. I, as an artist, um, talk a little bit about um, 
what art gives you on the inside. Most folks, I think, think about, if they're not an artist, think about art in terms of what got made. And, you know, mm -hmm. your, your mention of your classmate kind of leads me to think about that, that there's something that's happening on the, on the inside mm -hmm. that um, would be almost, I'm thinking, like being able to speak Spanish or to communicate in some other uh -huh. way. What happens on the inside when you paint or draw or do whatever you do? Art, it just relaxes me. Like It's my very last class during the day, so when I get in there, start drawing, and it just feels like natural and relaxed, and it just comes so easy. And like. I don't know, it's a, it's a very good way to express yourself, it's, um, it's a good way to release like emotion and stuff and it's kind of like a catharsis, like it just, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just, I guess if somebody was a writer and they wrote in a journal it would be kind of like that, drawing mm -hmm. and capturing something that you're feeling or seeing through the world. Mm -hmm. Is it hard to finish an art painting? Or um, a piece, whatever, whatever <laughs> you're working on, I've always... It's hard if you don't like it or you're <laughs> discouraged by how it's coming out. There's, I have pieces all over the place that are unfinished, but when you're really inspired, you want to finish. And sometimes if you're doing like unrealistic things that are not like a still life or something, it's hard to know when you're done. So mm. you get other people's input and they help you out. And <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, you know, I. I we haven't talked about this, but for me, writing is, uh, is oh, yeah. my art form, mm -hmm. and uh, writing a sermon is, mm -hmm. is kind of my creative endeavor every week. And one of the things that I appreciate about that is that I discover something <laughs> by, you mm -hmm. know, I, I might yeah. think I know as I'm getting started what it is that I want to say and how I'm going to say it, and then there's something that happens where yeah. where there's something revealed. Does that happen to you in mm -hmm. your process? Um, last year I did a portfolio on New Orleans and it was right after the hurricane and I've been going there since I was very young and I did all these different paintings that were really like emotionally charged and after I got finished each one it was interesting to see like how they came out because I'd painted people that I knew or places that I'd been over and over and um, my dad w went with me also, and it was neat. Like he, he's like, that's interesting how you did this instead of doing it realistically. And I learned a lot about like how New Orleans had like influenced me, or how, like what kind of perspective I had on it. And it's it's very enlightening. You can like, I don't know, if you stop and look at something on the street and you start painting it, you see things that like you never would have noticed because you're looking at it for so long and you look at it in a completely different sense, so it helps a lot. I, I also enjoy writing, but art's just different because it it makes you really look at like how things are or how how you really feel about it instead of trying to make it something that it's not, I guess. Yeah, in some ways I've always thought that was why Jesus often started his conversations with behold. Mm -hmm. As if to say, you know, stop and look mm -hmm. at this again. Take a look in a nif different perspective. Or It's so easy to see something every day over and over, but then when you really stop to look at it, you'll mm -hmm. see something you would have never noticed before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that would be true for parables as well, which are really uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's a, it is a painting with words. It makes mm -hmm. you picture something that you wouldn't, otherwise picture and get into mm -hmm. the all different Dynamic dimensions and mm -hmm. dynamics mm -hmm. of of a, of a truth rather than well let me just explain something mm -hmm. complicated to you let me sh do See, I a think painting art is like parables also because um, you're supposed to take what like what you see the viewer is supposed to take something from your painting they're supposed to feel something and everybody's going to feel something different so um, art's also, it's for yourself, but it's also for other people to enjoy and to l learn from and to experience new, to look at things from somebody else's view. And art, like, it's also more general because people, everybody can look at something and get something out of it, and everybody can understand something from a piece of art. And oftentimes people, like, won't understand, like, written words, so I think that's neat because 
even young children can look at art and it'll strike a chord in them. Do you have a favorite piece of artwork that inspires you? Um, <laughs> there's several. There's, I, um, there's a series that Monet did of the Rouen Cathedral and he was focusing on light and how it changes and I, I don't know, I just think it captures like the beauty of <laughs> light and like how it can make something look so different, how if one light shed on something it looks completely different than if another light is shed. And I think that that can be put into a more metaphorical sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I think that series is really neat. I think it, it's interesting. I think cathedrals are an art form that in themselves mm -hmm. and to capture a cathedral mm -hmm. a, and it really an art form that's uh, almost a community art form. I think they arose as various craftspeople f across centuries brought their best work and it was incorporated mm -hmm. into the whole of the cathedral. And uh, that's Some of the most beautiful art is um, religious, of course, and um, it's so neat to see how people like have taken the same thing from the Bible and created completely different works of art. I wrote a paper on comparing the um, Dolly's Last Supper to Da Vinci's Last Supper, and I mean they're completely different. Dolly's is very, um, it's non-realistic, it's very emotional and um, it shows Jesus in the center and he's like floating and I don't know, the light is really neat and it's really bright and uplifting and then Da Vinci's is of course like really flat and just shows them all lined up at the table and um, everybody's in shock because it's right after Jesus says that somebody's going to betray him and it's really neat to see how two masters took the story and show it in a completely different way mm -hmm. and I think that people can, it it, that helps people to look at stories that are so that are told over and over again from different perspectives, different um, mm -hmm. ways to think about things. One of the things that's been interesting to me, I use a website when I get ready to work on a sermon, and maybe you use this too, called textweek.com, and and they have an inventory for all these stories and passages from scripture, an inventory of of artwork so that if I mm -hmm. was looking at, you know, Jesus turning the, you know, water into wine mm -hmm. or, or the Last Supper, you, t you type in that, mm -hmm. that passage and it will show all kinds of artwork and that's just been so amazing, some by famous artists and mm -hmm. some by ones that maybe, you know, would be familiar to art historians or artists but not the average person. But that, exactly what you're saying, it's so interesting to see you know, through the centuries, all these different ways that people have of envisioning what is at the mm -hmm. center of, of a passage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a universal connection that you can reach to everybody when you show them a picture of something and to tell the story and everybody can look at it. And I don't know, I think it's an, an easier way to get a message across sometimes, for, yeah. for me at least as an artist. So it's... Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting you mentioned this Dolly uh, painting because I think this year um, my daughter went on a school trip to Washington DC and a little group of them sort of stayed around the art museum for an extra long time and they just happened on the Dolly portrait of The Last yeah. Supper and it I think it really sparked a, an amazing interest and a reaction in several people in this group. I've heard it from the, the students, but also from their parents and the way it really it's a, triggers. It's them. very powerful. It, I don't know, it's, <coughs> Jesus is wearing a white robe and it's just so sh like striking and strong. He's in the center and it just, like, it just makes you feel like so awestruck to look at it. And it uh, da Vinci's is so flat and it, the colors are darker and it, that painting makes me feel more like um, dark and like serene I guess but um, the Dolly painting is just like everything's going to be fine um, Jesus like everything's going to work out in the end he's going to die for us and it 
I don't know, I think Dolly captures that in a way that a lot of people miss out. Yeah. Tell us about um, some of the things you do for advanced placement, college level art at school. What are the... Um, we have to complete a portfolio every year. It consists of 12 breadth pieces, which is um, which means that you do lots of different work in lots of different mediums. And they can't be bigger than 18 by 24, which is often confining, because it's about this big. And then um, second semester, you do 12 portfolio um, concentration pieces, where you pick one thing, and that's all you do for the entire semester. You, you take a topic, and you just explore it, and you, you add on to it, you elaborate, you grow the whole time. So the pieces become more and more complex and cumulative. It's sort of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's it's to show that you can start with an idea and grow with it, and it's it's very challenging to do the twelve pieces. You, it ends up being one one a week, I think, to to be able to turn out that much artwork. It's oftentimes confining because you have to try different mediums. You have to do the artistic um, the things to show that you know what it what you have to do like education wise to be a college level art student but um, a lot of people that do art just do it for themselves and they do it for um, to strike emotions to show instead of being more mathematical about it and more precise on your lines and doing everything mm -hmm. by the book so it's it's challenging sometimes because you just want to do something from your heart or from what you're feeling but you have to do the assignments that takes away from the mm -hmm. time that you have to do your own work. Mm -hmm. Kind of, there's a discipline mm -hmm. to art that probably is hard for some people to appreciate. Maybe folks that that took music lessons would understand <laughs> that you. It's kind of the fundamentals that you're yes, yes. having to demonstrate that you have mastery over those fundamentals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that is that, that can be mm -hmm. kind of take away I, a little bit of your joy. Uh, like I often want to do something but I'll put it off because I have to do an assignment and I try not to though because you need to do the stuff from your heart and you need to do what you are feeling and as an artist like you need to produce things that come from your heart to stay true to like what you're feeling in yourself I guess so I try to continue to do that even while I'm taking classes. Because mm -hmm. that feeds your spirit. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It feeds your spirit. Well when did you start to have the feeling within yourself that you were an artist because I know I know that that happens for different people in different ways I think probably not until last year when we started well I knew I always loved drawing but I never really put too much thought into what I was doing I just did what I liked what I what came out of my hand but I started last year I put a lot more thought behind everything and um, I concentrated more on making an emotion out of a piece or I don't know, I guess AP class just made me focus my energy more than before and it, it made me become more aware of what I was producing and what people were seeing and all the way around. So, I know you've had a exposure to the artists that are populating Lower Town and are part of our community now. I wonder some of the things you've uh, gained from the connection with that, that lower town artist. It's it's such an awesome community to see like the people that it's brought together, the friendships that it's made, and like how much it's made Paducah grow. Um, there's all kinds of things, just like seeing people sit outside on their porches and talking and making friendships down there because of like the arts and stuff. And then they also do lots of programs with children where. Um, like the or the Christian Arts Center down there does a lot of work with local neighborhood kids and they got to have an art show in three different galleries where the first prize was in one and second mm. prize in another and they all they all traveled around Lower Town, this was a couple of weeks ago, to um, to see their pieces and they were so excited about looking for theirs and it's so neat to see like how many people that you would never expect to have gotten involved with the arts. People that have never even thought about being artists or being art connoisseurs that have fallen in love with Lower Town and just keep coming back in for more. It, 
it's a very neat opportunity for Paducah to have something like that. Any particular ways they've encouraged you or any? Uh... Um, there's lots of people that, um, like people that have left jobs, really good jobs, to come just follow their art, follow their heart and their art, I guess. But um, it's inspiring to see that people are making their livelihood on art and people are connecting with so many people. It makes me want to be able to connect with the masses also and for people to enjoy my work, like some of the artists that they do down there. Mm -hmm. Now you were um, working with Mark Palmer at yes. his gallery as mm -hmm. an intern. What, what was that like and what <laughs> were you doing? What, what does an intern with Mark so Palmer do? <laughs> well, with Mark, he, he paints in the morning. He likes to paint on his own and stuff, so it was difficult because with school going on, it'd come in the afternoons. And so it was, um, I did more of the business side of it, which was neat for me to see. And it was a nice break from just all the creating, creating. It was neat to see how he was able to be self-sustaining because of his art and all the people that came in and enjoyed it. It was so neat to, just everything about it, like hanging the shows and the way that he places everything and the way that art has fulfilled his life so much. It was neat to see. And he always works where he he never knows when he's finished with his paintings. And it was, I'd come in one day and it would look completely different from the last time I was in. And it was, the way he creates art is very enlightening because he never knows what he's doing. But he, but the finished product is so beautiful and it really comes from like inside of him. Yeah, we did a lot of our uh, holiday shopping in Lower Town, it's mm -hmm. been fun, and if you can keep a secret, I did, uh, I have a special, our, my daughters and I have a special present for my wife, for out of the Lower Town artist, so we're excited about that, but <laughs> mum's the word. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's so many different shops that like, people think they can't afford the art or something, but there's so many different forms of it down there that, um, like just the handcrafts and everything, just going to look at it is so accessible now. It really is. Mm -hmm. I was amazed. Mm -hmm. I was startled, really, at how. And I think people are often like shy to go because they feel like they don't really know anything about it. But that's not what like the galleries are trying to achieve. They they just want people to come and enjoy it, even if you don't know anything about the color or the composition. Or mm -hmm. a lot of people have gotten involved that. Are really excited about it I think. That's great. Mm -hmm. We just opened or the rose just opened etc and it has half of a student art or the, half of its a coffee shop half of it's a student art gallery and right now Paducah Tillman is running the student art gallery and so we get to hang the shows and it's all of our our artwork as of now so it ha that has been a very educational experience. That's marvelous. Because mm -hmm. yeah, that's so important if you're an artist to not oh, just yeah. look at what you've created in your own home or share it with people that, it's that you to, love, but to, but to be able everybody. to share mm -hmm. that with people who who you haven't met. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's a neat experience and somebody's interested in buying your piece and like you never think about selling it. You just think about oh I got I have to get this done for like a class or something. And when somebody likes somebody who has no idea who you are it likes your work and can can connect with it that's mm -hmm. that's very very interesting to see marvelous, marvelous. well caroline one of the things that gregory and i've been doing at the close of every program or as often as we can right, anyway right. is to um, invite people to share with our viewers um, a book or books that um, have inspired your faith or feed your spirit or have, have spoken to you in some way and I want to um, ask you if, if there's something that um, that you have read or are reading that that speaks to something deep in you just as as art does. There's a book um, by Sue Monk Kidd, Secret Life of Bees. I'm sure you guys have both read it. Mm -hmm. But I think that that book is really inspirational. It's It's happy and it's sad and it's spiritual and it makes you think about different levels of society and different ways that people connect. I, I read that book for a class earlier this year and I really enjoyed it and it it's got me thinking about a lot of things and it has inspired me to just think about 
things that you don't usually then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's Which is what what a painting does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a sculpture does. Mm -hmm. is introduce you to a new way of of looking or a new way of perceiving or mm -hmm. yeah, marvelous. The secret life of bees? Yes. Sue Monk Kid, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Marvelous. Any project you're working on now? Anything or anything you've got in your mind or heart or imagining? <laughs> uh, what where are you in um, besides I'm trying to find something to do and be good that I can take my art and help other people. So um, I've been really busy with school, but I know I need to make time to do something like that. And I'd like, I'd like to work with younger kids because a lot of the art programs are getting cut in our schools and stuff, and they're getting shorter and shorter. And I think it's so important for kids to explore this creative outlet. And I just, I just want to be able to, um, I don't know, connect with some younger kids somehow maybe through a daycare or something, just so that they can learn how to express themselves in a different way that they might not have the opportunity to at school or at home or something. Like, that kid Sean, like, has inspired me so much because art has allowed him to focus and do something and put his energy into something so exciting, and he might not have had that opportunity if the special needs department wasn't right next to the art department, and so they've been able to connect. So I just want to like work with our art honor society to be able to connect with other people and really like get out there and spread spread our art and our creativity so that it can it can keep growing and it can other people can use it like it's helped us and so mm -hmm. great <laughs> well we are so glad that you've come to share with us about all that oh well, thank you for having me and we're Appreciate your work in the community and uh, for the presence of art students all across the city and the county who are m making a difference and who are connecting with the, this community of artists that are mm -hmm. is growing and, as I said, blossoming really in our in our city and county. And it's a good gift. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for all you've shared with us. Mm -hmm. We're glad you've been here with us as well. We'll. Every time you see us, you'll know that it's Reflections, sponsored by the Paducah Cooperative Ministry, where we, all of us together, do God's work with human hands. We'll see you the next time. Shalom.